Good evening, Bahamas, on the broadcast tonight. The final curtain closes on a cultural icon. Plus, legislation on the way for the National Intelligence Agency. And the numbers continue to increase for the Royal Bahamas Police Force's summer camp. to you by Alive, the nation's newest and best LTE network. Good to be alive. Welcome to our news, the weekend edition, and thanks for joining us. I'm Andrew Nold. Cultural icon, founder and director of the Bahamas National Youth Choir, Cleophus Adderley was laid to rest today, hailed as a nationalist through his transgenerational contributions to nation building through youth development. Hundreds flooded Christ Church Cathedral for the state recognized the funeral to commemorate Adelie's life and legacy in a way befitting of the gifted musician. In what could be described as his homegoing concert, current and alumni members of the Bahamas National Youth Choir blended their voices to bid a final farewell to their founder and director, Cleophus Adderley. His life was commemorated today in a state-recognized funeral filled with his favorite hymns and choral selections. Even Pride in Our Native Land from the first Bahamian opera, Our Boys, which Adderley composed and arranged. Among those in attendance were Governor General Her Excellency Dame Marguerite Pinling, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, numerous cabinet members and other governmental officials. Adderley died in hospital two weeks ago following a long illness. He was 62. And while there have been a string of tributes from family and friends, some even describing the musical genius as Superman, to his wife, she was his lowest lane. Being his lowest lane, I felt privileged to do what I do in New York is what he does here, and we work together as one. We understood each other. Our marriage was so mystical, magical, methodical, meaningful, effortless. I can't even explain to you the type of marriage that I had with Mr. Cleophus Adderley, but I can say to you that I was definitely a happy wife. Adderley was recently awarded the Bahamian Icon Lifetime Achievement Award for service to his country. His wife says that honor couldn't have come at a better time. When Cleophus Adderley received that, the Icon Award, I was so happy for him. He was so well deserving of it. But to be quite honest with you, when I married Mr. Cleophus Adderley, he was my icon. <laughs> yes, he was definitely my icon. And on that day, it felt so beautiful just to be with him and to talk about so many things that we have in common. He is my treasure, and I was also his treasure, too. Also paying tribute to the late musical genius was Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis. We have lost an extraordinary Bahamian and native son whose musical genius resounded on earth and now graces the heavens. Cleophus's life was a symphony of love. He loved God, he loved his family, he loved life, and he loved, most of all, our Bahamas. Dr. Minnis says Adelie's impact and influence are still strong as ever through the indelible imprint he left on the Bahamian landscape. We have lost a tremendous talent, but his spirit and native genius live on in all who were fortunate to be touched by his life, his spirit, and his music. 
In other news, this evening, more than a month after shutting down the National Intelligence Agency, citing a lack of proper legal framework, National Security Minister Marvin Dame says the Minister administration is working feverishly on establishing proper legislation to govern the NIA. In fact, Dame says that legislation could be tabled as early as this year. We get more tonight from our Jasmine Brown. You can't form an effective uh, intelligence agency without partnership and cooperation and buy into, all right? And, and a clear mandate as to what that unit or to, what, what is that unit key responsibilities, all right? Uh, we say that we will bring legislation uh, to Parliament that will introduce uh, a national intelligence agency that will address all of the issues that we're seeing now. Last month, Dame said the government dismantled the NIA over the lack of legal framework needed to govern it. Now he says the government will soon bring the necessary legislation to the House of Assembly. It will happen soon. We have a lot of work to do. It will happen. It will happen soon. But in the meantime, what, we, what we're doing, again, in the short term, is we're working with all of the, all of the relevant agencies, right? to improve their intelligence gathering capacities and capabilities. The NIA was established under the former Christie administration. The FNM, while in opposition, labeled it a spy agency that was operating illegally. But there was never an NIA. And I continue to say that when we came into office, there was a small group of individuals uh, who formed a unit referred to as the, as the NIA. All right. There was, there was no cooperation, coordination between other agencies. Though the NIA was dismantled, $90,000 was allotted to the agency in this 2017-2018 budget, the same amount set aside in the previous fiscal year. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. From the crime beat, police making some significant inroads into Friday's fatal shooting with the arrest of two suspects. The victim, who was being electronically monitored, was sitting in a car along with two females along Boyd Road yesterday afternoon when they were approached by two men armed with handguns who fired several shots before fleeing on foot. Now officers who were on routine patrol nearby gave chase after the two suspects, but they were unable to catch them. However, police confirmed that the pair was taken into custody Friday evening. Meantime, investigations continuing tonight into another shooting yesterday that has left a woman detained in hospital. Police say the woman was driving in her Toyota car on Blue Hill South when a man reportedly fired shots at another man whom he was chasing. Unfortunately, the female driver was shot in the ordeal. She was taken to hospital where she is listed in stable condition. In the wake of the country's 77th murder for the year yesterday, Assistant Commissioner of Police Stephen Dean says police are amping up their efforts in the fight against crime. A man was shot and killed while in a car along with two females on Boyd Road yesterday afternoon. Dean said the quick response of the officers allowed them to pinpoint exactly who the suspects were almost immediately. However, he said more can and will be done to rid the streets of criminals. So we have to put a word out to the criminal elements out there that these brazen daylight shootings, they must come to an end because our Bahamian public is not going to accept this. That is why we have responded um, in a positive way. We must say to the criminal elements, they believe that there's no justice. They believe that they can walk around freely in New Providence and anywhere in the Bahamas committing crime and nobody's going to arrest them. We can tell them that they will not escape the, the long arm of the law. There have been five murders over the past seven days. Dean said police have been doing what they can to capture these criminals, but said they still need the help of the public. We must work in tandem with our Bahamian public. We must work to coordinate. We are asking members of the public. Members of the public see these visual shootings. They know who have firearms. Parents know who children are involved in crime. Girlfriends know who boyfriends are involved in crime. We are asking you to turn these persons in. Turn these persons in. We don't want when the persons come in custody, then you begin to come and swear in for these persons. Dean encouraged motorists to fix whatever they must on their vehicles, as police will be on the road this weekend during the necessary stops and checks. 
we will be out there. Our officers have taken an aggressive assault. We will be bringing in the firearms. So far, we have brought in a number of firearms. We have just brought in some firearms this week, and we'll be out this evening and straightforward. So I want you to give us the support that is necessary, but we cannot do this without the Bahamian public. We cannot do this without the public. Well, as Progressive Liberal Party Chairman Bradley Roberts calls on party supporters to rise up and challenge the Minnes administration and take to the streets, march and demonstra demonstrate, former FNM MP Richard Lightburn says the message is the opposite of what the PLP said they would do when they promised to support the Minnes administration in their quest to make the country better. Despite the, the um, PLP's assurance that they will do their best to support the government, and um, help the country move forward, that there are a number of the old guard within the PLP who um, cannot change, they cannot change their spots. They, they are of a mindset that you're constantly at war with the other political party, and until they get away from that mindset, um, it's going to be difficult for the country to advance. Um, I, I think that people like Bradley Roberts um, should have got the message that he does not um, he does not express the the view of the of the of the country which he once thought that he did. Lightborn called on Roberts to support the government and let go of the notion that the parties must be on opposing sides. So rather than sitting out there and criticizing and, and suggesting they're going to have we march too. Um, I think that you know they need to stop and pause for a minute and decide that really uh, if we're going to act in the interest of the country, that we all need to participate and not be um, uh, obstructive, as it appears they, they want to be. And we'll take a break here, but still ahead tonight. Family Island Airport's getting outfitted with some new technology to keep an eye on weather systems. That story and more when our news returns.